Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth part of the Flutter Weather App tutorial. If you follow the previous parts of this series, you probably have an app like this. It has a nice looking, it can show the weather in different cities, and by using the phone's geolocation function, it can show the weather in your current city. It's pretty cool, right? But what if I want to know how to plan for a vacation? What clothes do I have to pack? Yes, we will need a weather forecast. For this, we will use the third function of our API, it's called location day, and it can give us data about a particular date which can be a date from the future. For example, let's try out July 27th. By the way, it was July 26th when I recorded this video, so it gave me tomorrow's weather data. So this is the code we end up with in the last part. Let's create a fetching function similar to those we have already done. Let's name it fetch location day and make it a sync for the HTTP call. In order to know the current date, we need to declare a variable called today and we need to make it equal with the current date, what we can get by creating a new date time and call it now function. It returns with a date similar to this one. In this fetching function, we need to make the HTTP call 7 times since we are making a 7 day forecast. So let's create a for loop with i going from 0 to 7 and in this we can do the HTTP call as usual. So I'm just copying this line here and changing the variable's name to location day result. As you can see, here we need to write the data after the void ID. So let's write a slash and the desired date. Since we want to know the dates of the following 7 days, we need to increase the current date by 1 and 2 and 3 and so on. We can do this by using the add method of our today variable where we can add days to the current date. But we are not ready because the API wants the date in a different format, so we need to format this date. For this, we need to use the date format class. By using this class, we can get the date in any forms we want to. So let's format our date to look like this year slash month slash day format. For using this date format class, we need to install this Dart package. So let's paste this into our dependencies and run pubget. And then we also need to import it in our main.dart file as usual. Oh, and also I didn't mention but we need to convert it to string just like we did with the void then, as we did in the fetch location function, we need to decode it and then we need to separate the actual data what we need. So let's just copy those lines here. Now we don't need this consolidated weather thing since the dataset doesn't contain this. So we just need the zeroth element of the result. Ok, we can move on to the set state section where we don't want to change the current weather so I just delete this line. And instead of changing the current temperature and the abbreviation of the weather state, we need to declare new variables for the forecast. Let's go to the top of this class and declare a mean temperature forecast list that has 7 elements and also a max temperature forecast and an abbreviation forecast list. Then we need to change the set state section to set these new variables. So let's write mean temperature forecast here and let's make its ith value equal to the rounded mean temp section of the dataset. Same goes with the max temperature forecast but it has to be equal to the rounded max temp part. And the abbreviation forecast ith value stays equal to the weather state abbreviation part. We are ready with this function. Now we need to call it somewhere. So let's see when we want the forecast section to refresh. Yes, after the user has searched a city, so let's call it in the onTextField submitted function right under the other fetching functions. And also we need to call this function inside the initState function to have the data on the beginning screen, which in our case will be the weather forecast of San Francisco. 
right now we are ready with the background stuff so now we can move on to the appearance and design most of the time it's better to have the design first and then the functionality but in this case the temperature value and the weather state icon take out the biggest part of the design so now it seemed easier for me to start with the functionality I'm planning to make the forecast section somewhere here between the name of the city and the input field. I'm thinking about a row with the different days in it and for each day we should show the date and the weekday, the icon of the weather state and the temperature values. Since we have declared a minimum and the maximum temperature variables, here we should show the minimum and the maximum values of the temperature to look more precise and also to try out something new. Here's a final look what we'd like to achieve now, so let's get started the designing. As the first step, we need to locate the right place for this forecast in our code. It means we have to find the end of the part which is doing the city's name text. And it's right here. Okay, so let's create a row here. It will have seven children, one for each day of our seven day forecast, but for the test let's create only two of them. The children will be widgets. Let's name this widget forecast element. And now we need to write this widget. For this I'm going down at the very end of the code. Here we can declare this function that will return with a widget. So let's write widget forecast element and inside the function after a return we can write widget as usual. Let's create a container as the root of this widget. We need a decoration which is a box decoration with a color of this. I'm using RGBO to set the opacity because I want the container's background to be semi-transparent. So I set the opacity to 0 0.2. We need to set a circular border radius the container widgets child has to be a column where we can have five children the first is the abbreviation of the day of the week okay everyone knows we need a text where we need to use the date and class and the date format class just like we did before but now we want the abbreviation of the weekday so we need to use this e function let's create two helper variables up here the first one has the current day and the other one will know the days after the current day as I look back on the function of this variable I realize it would have been smarter to name it days from now so you should change its name if you'd like to anyway the forecast element function needs to have an input that tells how many days we want to go forward in the future Let's style this text as usual, white color and a font size of 25. Then we need to scroll up to the row where we can call this forecast element function. We have to write an input for this function. Let's write 1 to the first one and 2 to the second one. Therefore the first one will have the tomorrow's weather and the second one will have the day after tomorrow's weather. Alright, here comes the fun part. Let's try it out. Nice, I got Monday and Tuesday and it's Sunday right now so it's working. Let's continue the design with the date. The date is very similar to the weekday. It only differs in the format we need to use. Here we need to call this MMMD function to get the desired date format. And I'm also changing the font size to a little bit lower 20. Next step is the weather icon. It's similar to the big one we have already had above the temperature value. So I'm just copying the whole image.net for a widget and only changing the width to the half. But now we need an abbreviation value in our function 
So let's give the abbreviation for cast list 0th and 1st elements here. After the reload, it looks like this. It has the right numbers and pictures, but it's not too nice. It looks too crowded, so let's add some padding here and there. Let's wrap the column widget with a padding widget, which has a 16 edge inset in all the directions. And also wrap the whole container with another padding widget. And let's set a 16 pixels wide left padding to have some space between the rows. Okay, now it looks much better and we are almost ready. We only need two last component, two text widgets for the minimal and the maximal temperature forecast. I'm just copying the temperature text from above because we need to use the same format. I'm just writing the word high before it and only changing the size to 20. Ok, we need a value to display. I rename it to max temperature since we have two temperature values now. We can copy this whole text widget and change the name to min temperature. Now we can do the same thing we've done with the abbreviation. First, we need to write them as inputs of this function and then we need to call this function with the right values above. So let's write the mean temperature forecast and the max temperature forecast zeroth value to the first function call and the first elements to the second function call. Great! Let's wrap the image with a padding as well. I think a 16 pixels of a bottom and top padding looks nice. And don't forget to change the text before the minimum temperature to low instead of high. Now we need to call the forecast element function 7 times with increasing values, like this. Or a better solution is to use a for loop, like this with an i variable going from 0 to 7. As you can see, it's overflowing. To handle this, we should create a scrollable row, what we can have in a really easy way. We only need to wrap our row with a widget called single child scroll view. And we need to set its scroll direction property to axis.horizontal. Let's try it out. Yes, it works. Let's search for a different city. Ok, it works, the values are changing, super. But when the background is vivid like this, it's pretty hard to read the forecast. For this, we should place a filter to our background picture to make it a little bit darker. Let's find the section where we created this background image and let's set its color filter property to this new color filter that mode colors that black dot width opacity of uh, 0.6 and a blend mode with DSTA top. If you save it, you will see it's more readable. Now the last thing we need to do is to search for different cities around the world and check out the weather forecast to know what to pack for the vacation, even if it's imaginary. <laughs> Thanks for coding with me, I hope you liked it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and like these videos. Until next time, see you guys!